All right, with Nigeria's unemployment figures at about 23.1% and rising, it is expedient that the youthful population gets involved in entrepreneurial ventures uh, to reduce these unemployment figures in the country. I have in the studio with me two entrepreneurs that operate here in Nigeria, and the beauty about it is one is pretty much a startup and the other has been in the business for so long. So yes, let's get what it's, the experience is like for them operating here in Nigeria. Thank you so much, Kufre and Oni. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. So I really like the fact that you're both working in the same um, space, which is barbing. Quite an unconventional business for a lady for one, right? Yes. I mean, and then for you, you've been in the business for such a long time. But I think I'll start with asking, what has business been like for you operating here in Nigeria? Um, to be honest, you, um, you know, like everyone knows, um, doing business in Nigeria is not easy. Um, but uh, with God, everything is possible. But it's not really been easy for me because um, you have to face with Delhi, meeting up with people, meeting up with the um, the different different taxes and all those things to meet up um, to make the the shop keep going. So it's not easy. It's not really been easy. I mean, for your business, right? You realize that you've opened one outlet, two outlets, and the rest of it. Because some people would believe when it comes to barbing, maybe the highest it can be is have some kind of kiosk by the roadside. How lucrative is that particular venture? Mean mine or the, the roadside? Yeah, well, barbing as a whole, what makes the difference? Um, to me, I think it, it depends on how you want to package your business. I don't really see difference. Someone can package the roadside and see have more customers because at the end of the day, it's not just about the, the roadside that matters, it's about who is operating inside. Mm -hmm. That's why I see barbing as a well. whole. So it's not about whether it's a roadside or it depends on how you want it to be. If you're on the roadside and you package your business well, you build your clientele well, you can make money and move on from living, I mean, move on from roadside to a proper shop, you know? So I don't really think uh, it's about roadside also. Or oh, inside uh, the store with AC. Yes, There's really yes, no difference. Yes, no, it's that, about packaging. That, 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 hmm. that not really matters. I have, I've seen a lot of people with um, they have a better shop, but at the end of the day, they ended up closing down because of mm. the fact that the people working inside are not. They don't know what they are doing. So it's not about the roadside. All right, we'll get back to that particular yeah. point. But let me hear from you, Oni. You are a female barber. Yes, I am. Quite unconventional, I must say. Yeah. Um, my, my business is a baby, but trust me, starting a business in Nigeria, it's not really easy. From startup, capital, getting human resources, laborers, to fix up what you want. It's not really been easy then to rigid rules and regulations. But really, mm. every entrepreneur in Nigeria is really very strong. Doing business in Nigeria is really difficult. It takes a lot of balls to be a business person in Nigeria. All right, so this will bring me to my next question about funding. When you just started your business, did you go for a government grant? Because I know that gov the government has been doing a lot of, you know, giving of grants, you know. Uh, I've never yeah. heard about that. <laughs> yes, I did. But as far yeah. as I'm concerned, it's a front. Because I don't want to name government places I went for and in fact they made me there's a time I cried for once opening out of excitement that oh my god the box stops here I'm so happy this is my miracle but at the end it didn't work even to Lagos state government to some so what were, what were those challenges that you faced at the time well getting start up they come they promise you and when you go it's just front I think it's just propaganda they don't really Oh, then, Kufre, so what, what was your experience starting up? How did you start up? Did you get a government fund or it was personal? Not at all, you know? personal. It's personal. I just struggled on my own. Nobody, even at, at some points, I was getting a lot of promises from people, but at the end of the day, they ended up disappointing, disappointing. me. So That's it just made me like, at, at this moment, I don't even believe anybody can do any, make any change, not even the government. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So um, what about your staffing? Because, I mean, some people would say that it's not enough to have a vision and start up your business, but you need to get the best staff. You need to, And these particular businesses that you run, they are, they are human resource dependent, yes. if I put it that way, because it's, you can't just run it alone. If you have 10 people that want to cut their hair, you didn't expect that it's just you that's going to do all of it. So how are you able to manage your staff? How are you able to keep them? Do they live? What are those challenges you face? Um, to me, managing staff is not really a problem to me because 
I believe it's what I'm doing, it's what I've been doing for years. So I understand the system while even when I was working for someone. So leaving that place and starting up with only myself and bringing people to come and work together with me, I don't see, uh, I don't really think it's uh, difficult. The only thing is, you know, mentality of some of them when they are coming in newly, they be based on the fact that they were already used to, they didn't believe that this thing can take them to somewhere. So you're always seeing it like, oh, out of frustration, let me just do this, let me just do this. So at some point, I mean, you're trying to let them understand that this thing can put you in a better shape. This is like a profession to me, or you can even make it better than the way you've been seeing it for years. It's always really, really difficult. So a lot of them don't see it like, they're always seeing it like you're trying to inconvenience them out of the roots or from where they're coming from. Mm. So uh, that's the only challenges I have. In, 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 in the sense that you're trying to, you know, most of the barbers, like, they're already used to that local lifestyle, like a choice. Mm -hmm. can, I, can I say that, please? Because of the fact, if you, if you drink, the smoke, they do all that. So when they are coming to a place that you're trying to, uh, you can't smoke here while walking, you can't dress like this, you have to dress well, they were like, ah, this is not a, a, a So you still try work, to you know? maintain it's that corporate, corporate, corporate structure, structure. Yes. even in an yes. entrepreneurial business. Yes, of course, mm. of course. So I think that's one, one of those things that people miss out on when they have um, their businesses. I know that you've worked for somebody before yes. you started your own. Yes. Yes. So what was your disposition towards your work at that time? The most important thing is structure. Like, me, I'm a graduate. I finished from FUTO, and there's this bad mindset about um, skilled workers, that they are mm. nobody or they are low class. So my own mindset is how to change the narrative, that there are no menial jobs, only menial mindset. So it mm. goes back to the packaging and the branding. You try to structure it so that people see your business not as a bubble shop, yes. but as an office. Great. So from your dress code to the way you carry yourself to your personal branding, that's the most important thing. Anybody that wants to work with me, I first of all teach them how to have a personal brand, how to have a personal vision, mm -hmm. understand my company mission statement, vision statement, and my goal so that they can run mm. with it. You understand? Yes. So it's not just like the regular barber shop. We're different. We're changing mm. the narrative. You understand? So, so that you, it's something that a banker can match with a barber. Yes. Because while I was working for someone, my salary can match up with a, with a banker's salary. You understand? So why can't I do it for my own? So that's my own vision, that a... a